Hi dolls! So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, well, really a lot different, but just bear with me. It's still creative though, so like roll with me here. So instead of a makeup video, like I wanted to bring you something else, some other art that I like to dabble in, you know, like not on my face. I don't want my channel to just be strictly makeup all the time because like where's the fun in that. That's just boring to do the same thing all the time. So I like to mix it up and create in different mediums from makeup to graphic design to actual art that we're going to be talking about today to typography. I really run the gamut when it comes to like just being an artsy fartsy type of chick. I'm going to dabble in whatever I want and this is my channel. I can do what I want. Sorry. But really what I'm talking about today is acrylic pouring. And if you haven't heard of acrylic pouring, I will give you all the details and the rundown in this video. Alrighty guys, this is going to be a very chatty video, so I will leave timestamps in the description so that you can skip ahead to wherever you need. So basically acrylic pouring is something I ran into, I think on Instagram. In the past year I started to like play around with it. Unfortunately, I haven't done it in quite a while, which like really makes me sad. It was really therapeutic for me and I just had so much fun. I figured that this was a good excuse to like show you what acrylic pouring is and an excuse for me to get back into it. So I wanted to share that with all of you today. Well, before I get ahead of myself, let me explain what acrylic pouring is. So acrylic pouring, paint pouring, fluid artwork. It's an abstract style of painting. It's like super modern and it looks like this. I'll show you some images, some of my favorites that I've found on Instagram or Pinterest. Um, I'm literally obsessed with how this looks and if I didn't still live in my mom's house, I would have stuff like this all over my walls, but unfortunately that's not the case. I got some roommates that probably it's like not their vibe, you know, mom and dad. My initial thought was I want to get that kind of look and I don't want to pay that kind of price tag. So I fell into this by looking through like home decor videos. I love home decor DIY videos. They're like my favorite. And I wanted to be able to create my own paintings in the colors that I was looking for, like to match my decor vibe. And I didn't want to pay like $70 at home goods for something like that. I wanted to create it myself. And I mean, knowing that you made something this cool yourself is like kind of rewarding. I mean, seeing it on the walls in your house and having someone ask about it, I feel like that's really cool. So I don't know. <laughs> I just like, you know, tooting my own horn, I guess. With a little research, I found out how to do it and I realized how freaking easy it actually is. It makes it look 10 times like more intricate than it really is. And you can do it on the cheap. So I was sold. You can pretty much do an acrylic pour on any type of like flat surface that you want. I mean, obviously the most widely used would be a canvas, but you could do it on wood. I see people do it on tiles, glass, like pretty much anything. You could incorporate it in a lot of different ways into your home. So if you're interested in learning how to do this at home, just keep on watching. And I promise it's not hard. And the more that you do it and like play around with different colors and different techniques, I'm telling you, they get like better and better because that was the case with me. And I just went in with it willy-nilly. Oh, and if you didn't know, I did make an Instagram page for my pores. My Instagram for my acrylic pores is ultraviolet acrylics, all one word. So if you want to check out what I have done in the past, you can go there and see some of my art. So let me give you the rundown of everything that you will need and a bunch of different information on acrylic pouring. So keep watching if you want to follow along with me. Maybe first I should show you my own acrylic pours, like probably should show you that I actually can do this so that you will listen to what I'm saying right now. So hold please, I'll show you a few of my favorite pours to date. So this is probably my absolute favorite because I actually took the time to varnish it. So this is, hold on, ooh, this is my favorite one. 
and you can see it's glossy because I put a varnish on it but I am most proud of this baby this one's a little more earthy hold on this one's super cool though if you like earth tones I like how much gold came through this one. I love it and I really don't think I would ever get rid of this one or sell this because I just love how it turned out. <laughs> now this one I feel like is perfect for a beach house. These are two little nuggets together. We're back. So there's this one. Just reminds me of like a coral reef. So that was the one I showed you two of a kind in the same color scheme super pretty and this one was really cool like even cooler before it dried but there was like neon yellow in it neon green some like violet magenta turquoise yeah so those are some of my top favorites that i've made to date so now let me get into the tools and what you will need to achieve an acrylic pour So the first thing you'll need, obviously, is like a clean setup. I would line it with garbage bags, something that you can just easily clean up. But what I like to use, like where I actually pour, is the top of like a storage bin Tupperware thing. So like one of these bad boys. I'll use this basically because if I'm pouring on top of it and I have my canvas on here propped up with like some blocks underneath, you definitely want to prop it up with something underneath or it'll stick to this and just be a gloopy mess trying to pick it up it'll be done. So I like to use one of these because the middle section is usually raised and once the paint starts slipping off, there's like a little, like you have your own like drip tray built in. So I like to use one of these flipped upside down um, to catch all my extra paint in. Like I said, you can use a canvas or you can use any type of flat surface you would like to acrylic pour on top of. It's up to you. So a nice little canvas depending on what size you're looking for. Easily accessible at any craft store. They're usually on sale in packs. What I will say is if you're starting out, maybe try a small canvas like this size i think this is a an 8 by 11 like a sheet of paper size because the larger the canvas is the harder it will be when you're trying to maneuver the paint so start small get bigger um, as you get more skilled and like feel comfortable moving the paint around also what you will need obviously is paint so this is my little paint collection most like more professional painters and artists will tell you to use better quality paint because there's more pigment to it and it just works better apparently. Well, I started off by doing this on the cheap and wanting to spend as little as possible so I went in to AC Moore and picked up their cheapest acrylic paints which is their Nicole's brand and I'm pretty sure I got these for like three for a dollar when they're on sale and they have worked just swimmingly so I would say if you want to try this out buy these paints and see how they work for you and then you can move into better paint I also have bought Michaels like artists loft a bigger tube of white is just more beneficial to me but I've also bought uh, some Liquitex basics paints these are the ones that a lot of painters and artists will recommend truth be told i really haven't had that much better of an experience using these so like i said the cheap cheap paint works for me acrylic pouring comes down to being able to pour paint obviously so if you're trying to do this with as little of tools as possible then you can thin out your paints with water i've seen that online and i'm sure it probably works However, when I was doing my research, I wanted to like make the chances of me screwing this up as small as possible. A great mixing medium for this paint is called Floetrol. You can get it in smaller bottles or you can get it in this big jug. And this is a one gallon jug that you can get at Lowe's and this was about 15 bucks. Basically, you're gonna mix that with your paints to be able to get them into a nice viscosity i don't know if that's the word 
to be able to pour and like have them flow around the canvas so that you can manipulate it. I also use little co wooden coffee stirrers to uh, stir my paint into my flow trawl. Popsicle sticks would work just fine too, but um, to be completely honest, I just take these from the kitchen at my job. Don't tell anybody. Any little sticks you're going to need to just mix up all your colors and your paint. With that, each color is going to need its own little cup. So I just use these little bathroom cups from Walmart. If you're doing like huge pours, you're going to want to use larger cups, like maybe a solo cup or just something bigger than this. Something I haven't mentioned yet is cells. And cells are basically like the little cellular looking things in an acrylic pour and these are like coveted if you want your acrylic pour to look really cool have a lot of dimension and depth you want cells to come through so basically a way to ensure that is to use some type of like silicone mixed in because they always just make the pour come out really really cool it's actually a hair product it is the uh, OGX Coconut Milk Anti-Breakage Serum. This is like a silicone-based dimethicone serum. What I will do is when I'm pouring my different colors into my main cup that will be poured on my canvas, I will just every couple of colors or so add in a drop or two of this serum and it will ensure that those cells come through once the pour is out on the canvas. So those are like the basic things that I use when it comes to pouring. Um, I'll show you later how I seal my pours. I forgot one thing. Now this is very extra so you don't have to use this at all. I also had this on hand as strange as it sounds. This is like a little blowtorch. This is actually for a creme brulee set but Nonetheless, it's a blowtorch. A blowtorch will also help you in creating cells in your pour. You can take your blowtorch and very gently, not too close to the surface of the pour, go over it and the heat will pop the bubbles trapped in the paint and usually help a cell to come through. So I promise, those are the basic tools that I have here. Okay, so I also forgot to mention the different styles of acrylic pouring that there are. Or I mean, there's you really can do this any way you want. Just throw it on. My favorite is a flip cup where you fill up your cup and layer all the different colors that you're using into the cup and then meet your canvas to the cup and flip it over and then release the color. And I've always gotten the best result using that technique. A dirty pour would just be layering the same way and then pouring out your color onto your surface in a ribbon of a way and being able to spread it out that way. And then also there's a tree ring pour which gives you more of a, a ripple effect, like looks like the rings of a tree if you cut it open. It's really simple. Layer your paints and then you will pour it out and kind of move your cup this way to create the ripples and it comes out really really cool looking without further ado i'm gonna get into the pouring and i'm gonna show you a live demo of how i pour right about now all right fam so we are gonna get started with the demo so these little things right here are little pegs that my grandmom had she ran a ceramic studio and I'm assuming they were used to prop stuff up when it was drying so I have them in my basement and I use them for my pores I have my flow trawl here and I have the colors that I'm using mixed here on the side and then these are two I did not mix yet so I'm gonna show you uh, the ratio kind of that I use and how I mix them this is a metallic gold and this is just a turquoise and I mix them a little differently so I'm going to show you that right now. Alright, so I'm going to take my turquoise. This is Mermaid Teal by uh, AC Moore Nicole brand paint that I was showing you previously. And I'm just going to take my flow trawl and really, I kind of pour based on 
how much I think of this color I'm going to use, which will be like moderate, and this is going to be a small canvas. So I put my paint in first and usually just cover the bottom of the cup. And then for this I'll probably pour a little less than halfway. We're going to be probably doing two canvases, um, but I'm definitely going to have enough paint for more than two canvases judging by all of these colors I got over here. And um, what I like to do is using my little wooden stirrer, I just like to begin to fold the color up from the bottom so you can see it grabs the color and then I'll start to just mix it up until I see that all the Floetrol is mixed through and the true color has come all the way out. The Floetrol does dry clear, so even if your color doesn't look true in the cup, it will come through once the painting dries. Set that off to the side here. And then for my metallic paints, um, I don't actually mix them with Floetrol because what I found since I use cheaper paints is that the Floetrol actually dulls the metallic finish of these paints um, since they're not really super high quality. So what I just do for the metallic colors is take honestly just a little bit of water very sparingly and just adjust as needed but I just use like a drop and if I go overboard with water I'll just adjust and add more paint but this keeps the metallic like look how pretty that looks can you see that yeah always add probably to every one of my pores a metallic gold because it just makes it look expensive and I don't know so those are the two ways I really just mix up my paint. No real science to that on my end. But we are going to be using these little eight and a half by 11 sized canvases. Got all of my paints mixed. You can see it's a pretty girly color palette. So excuse me for the crunching of the bag noise. I have trash bags all around because if my mom sees where I'm doing this, she's gonna freaking kill me. So let's get started. I filled my white the most because I always pretty much always do a pour with white since this canvas is eight and a half by eleven it's pretty small I'm only gonna need one full cup and I'm gonna show you the flip cup technique first so I'm gonna take my white paint and start I always start by layering with white paint because it's usually the thickest I'm gonna use the magenta pretty sparingly because that will pop through quite a bit and also while you're layering the higher you pour your paint the more it's gonna dig into the layer below it and become more mixed with the other color if you pour very closely and layer lightly then it will stay mainly above just keep layering my paints in really no specific order just following how I feel will come out looking really nicely and then throw my white back in, and then I'll start mixing it up. Add some of my silicone medium that I showed you before, just a couple drops. And this is what's gonna help us create cells, especially in our flip cup. One, oh, that was kind of a lot, I'll do another one. is a very very full pour I'm gonna move my paints off to the side my whole table is covered in trash bag and just for good measure one more drop of silicone so now we got our full cup here and what I'm gonna do is just flip it real quick pray for the best and then we will release one whoo I'm scared haven't haven't done this in a while guys I'm freaking scared one two Oh, that looks so pretty already just around the sides. Can you see that? Woo! Okay. Just want to tap, make sure all the paint is, uh, this. Oh! I'm going to move this forward. I almost dropped it. Tap it, make sure all the paint is coming through. And then once we let it go and it moves around, then we can start manipulating the canvas. And if there's any spots that paint really can't get to, we'll add some color here and there. Ready? 
Flip cup technique, releasing now. <gasps> oh my God. And I just like to pour the excess around the sides so that we make sure we can, uh, we get a nice even layer of paint and we don't waste any. Oh my God, guys, it looks so freaking beautiful. Oh my God, I missed this so much. Holy crap. If you look inside the cup, it looks so cool, but I don't want to like waste it. So hold on. Oh my God, it's been so long since I did this, but just if you can see in there, oh my God, it looks so cool. God. All right, starting to pour off. So let's start moving it around. Oh my God. And I see all those cells we created with that silicone. So unfortunately, we're gonna lose some of the beautifulness that we created because if you let too much paint on the canvas, oh, we gotta pour some off, it will sag. So you need to make sure that you do get rid of some of the paint because it will sag and it will dry and then it will start to crack, which we do not want. So I'm just gonna move this around, manipulate it as best I possibly can. Unfortunately, I'm losing some of that gold but holy crap, is that not beautiful? This is like unicorn fantasy dreamland. Like take some of the paint, make sure you're getting all the sides, bring it around. I like to just go around and uh, go around the rim here. Make sure our corners are covered. Sometimes silicone settles in weird little funky places and um, it'll create just like random little pockets where paint didn't get. So go ahead, fill those in with your fingers. We did it. Uh, that was pretty easy. I feel like the color scheme was super freaking beautiful and came out so cool. I um, did not prepare very well because I didn't bring paper towels or napkins. You're gonna wanna let your pores dry for a full day, if not a couple days before you touch them and before you can varnish, put a veneer on. That's how easy this is, guys. I told you I was not kidding. Oh, you know what, while we're here, I'm gonna actually show you also how to use a blowtorch. So if you can see here, through here, there's little speckles where there's probably other color underneath and we'll be able to get those colors to come through if we use a blowtorch. All right guys, I'm back. I got myself a little raggy poo to be able to wash and clean myself up. All right, I'm gonna use my little blowtorch here and see if we can get any other colors to come up. And I'll show you just if this works or not. Hold on. Oh yeah. Now you wanna just hold it over. Oh, see, did you see that come through? Watch. Oh my gosh. That will really like help the colors underneath come through. And you wanna hold it above, not very close. You don't want the paint to catch on fire, so don't get crazy. You get the gist of the flip cup pour. We'll move on to a dirty pour example. So hang tight and uh, I will start off with a fresh canvas for you guys. All right guys, back canvas number two here and Basically, we're gonna start off the same way, layering in the cup. I'm still gonna start off with white because I want this to have a similar color scheme and like a dreamy, airy vibe. So I'm gonna use some of the lavender. All right, so this time, instead of flipping it over and pulling out off the cup, I'm gonna do a dirty pour, which is basically just pouring it all over the canvas, usually in like a ribbony pattern. And uh, yeah, just seeing how it goes that way. So we'll be able to see if it creates the same kind of looking cells. Let's hope for the best. This is a different way to do it, so uh, wish me luck.
Wow. Color scheme looks beautiful. Dreamy. This is like very Ariana Grande vibes in whatever her video is. So let's start moving it around. I feel like I poured this in a crappy way, so I'm gonna have to do, I feel like with this you have to do more work moving it around. This one, a lot lighter in color. That magenta really made up most of the color. On the last one, this one is so dreamy and like airy. But yeah, look at the difference. More like ribbons of color versus cells. It's just a different look. A lot more relaxed and fluid, honestly. But yeah, that's our second technique. See if we can get anything. I feel like. Maybe around. Now I'm gonna move into showing you how I seal one of my already finished and dried pores. All right, fam, so the last thing I'm gonna be showing you is how to seal one of your paintings after it has dried. So what you're gonna do first is you're gonna get some baby powder. And if you use silicone on your pour, you'll be able to feel spots where there's a high concentration of that silicone still on the dried painting. So what you're gonna wanna do is slap on some of that baby powder in a nice little light layer. So I'm just gonna do that first. And you're also gonna need some paper towels for this. And you're just gonna start to rub that in to the surface. And once you start rubbing it in, you're gonna see how it's gonna kind of ball up in certain places. And that's when you know it's grabbing the extra silicone and pulling it up. It's kind of making like a little bit of a paste. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take another clean paper towel and you're just going to spritz it with a little bit of water in like a little water bottle. Just have it nice and lightly dampened because now you're going to wipe the surface of the pour just in case you missed any excess baby powder just to make sure it's really nice and clean and ready to go for the varnish. Alright, I think we're good to go there. The next step is our varnish. So I showed you before, this is the varnish I use, the Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. And I just pour out a little tiny bit into one of these like Chinese takeout containers. I'm going to be using this paintbrush that I showed you as well. This is a synthetic brush from Michaels. So I'm just going to dip in nice and lightly. You don't want your brush to be like sopping wet so I just like wipe off on the edge. I really just want a nice thin layer. You don't want to go over it too many times either. So You're gonna let this dry also for a day. Make sure you, I'm sorry, make sure you get the edges and the corners and stuff. I've usually just done one layer and it always comes out looking really nice. But yeah, that's about it. And you're just gonna let this dry for a day. It will come out looking like the other one that I showed you, nice and glossy and super pretty. But you can see now just that little amount and it will stay like that and look super super beautiful and crisp and now you have some DIY gorgeous freaking artwork for your home or to give as a gift look how awesome that is alrighty guys so I hope you enjoyed this video I know it was different and not expected really but I just wanted to 
you know show you some other things that I like to do I hope you like what I came up with I hope you liked seeing this demo and seeing how I create acrylic pours they are so perfect and beautiful for your house you can give them as gifts on like little coasters or like tiles of some sort I've seen that a lot and they make great gifts and you made it yourself, which is really, really cool. But the ideas and possibilities are endless. I hope you enjoyed seeing this and thank you so, so much for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. As always, hit the notification bell so you know every time I upload. Yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.